They're what I call five universal bucket list experiences that make most lists, or at least a subset of these do. These include hot air ballooning, bungee jumping, skydiving, an African safari, and running a marathon. I call these the Universal Five because first, they're quite compelling, but also you've probably heard of them before because a lot of people do in fact talk about these experiences. So we won't be talking about them today. What I wanna give you here today is a unique list of 10 items that have a lot of wow factor, and frankly, some of them cost absolutely nothing. Let me also add an oddball observation. After 250 plus videos that I posted over the last several years, no one has ever asked me what's inside that glass jar. What's that black bag inside that glass jar behind me on the right? Truth be told, at one point I thought I would do an entire video about what's inside that black bag, but that never materialized until today. Today, I will disclose what's inside the black bag because frankly, it was on my bucket list and after you hear about it, it may be on your bucket list too. That's number 11 in the top 10, so stick around to the end because I think you'll find it quite interesting. All right, let's get into the very rare and super cool bucket list items. Number one, visit a place of historical significance to your family. This could be your childhood home, where you and your spouse met, where your parents met, Checkpoint Charlie in Berlin, where your grandfather snuck your grandmother across the border into the West. You get the point. I've revisited a key place in my past three times now, and each one was a very unique and awe-inspiring experience. I did this as recently as last summer. Last summer, I was on my way to a family reunion on my mother's side of the family. It was a family reunion with people I'd never met before, for no good reason, frankly, other than the fact that my mom and her parents moved from Ohio to a different place, and so there was no real need to go to Ohio after that. I had heard stories about how my grandfather and my grandmother had spent the first few years in Ohio and then moved to another Midwestern city in this wonderful but quite remote home located in Lima, Ohio. Aside from meeting really nice people, we decided to take a quick stop an hour and a half away at my mother's childhood home. Now, frankly, she left there when she was two or three and had not been back since, so it was unique to her as well. Looking at her, looking at her childhood home was priceless, and it actually added an element of context to my own life that I couldn't have got if I just heard the story again about her life in Lima, Ohio. I felt like I had discovered a secret part of my past that connected many dots that had not been connected before. Number two, sleep in a 1930s luxury ocean liner. If you've ever been on a cruise, you'll note that it isn't subtle. Everything is stuffed onto the cruise ship. It's a bit like a floating Las Vegas in some ways, but in order to get all of those activities, the buffets and everything else onto the ship, the rooms themselves have to be less than ordinary, to use a kind term. Many of the cabins are inside cabins with no windows, but that's okay. That isn't the reason that you're on the ship. You're on the ship for all of the other stuff that goes along with it. But the cruise industry changed about 40 or 50, 60 years ago, I suppose, and it went from a very elegant experience to one that is filled with a lot of fun, but not a lot of subtleness, shall we say. But many people yearn to experience the other type of cruise ship, the 1930s type, the Titanic type, the type from Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, where they get dressed up for dinner and activities include things like standing on the deck, watching the ship go by and having discussions with one another, playing cards at the card room. If this is a bucket list item for you, you might consider sleeping aboard the Queen Mary Hotel in Long Beach, California. For about $400 a night, you can get a really nice cabin with a window, and the whole hotel experience is on board the ship. There's a lot of wood, art deco, and other things from the era that make you feel like you're experiencing cruising the way that it used to be. Because at that time, people wouldn't sacrifice the size of their cabin for one more buffet table, and cruising was an experience for the wealthy. Next, tour Antarctica. People who go there, go there for the experience of going to a place 
that frankly is hard to get to and very few have been to. The exact number of people throughout time that have visited Antarctica is a number that's not really well known, but a lot of people put it at about 1 million. And when you consider that the Earth's population over the millennia has been in excess of 100 billion people, 1 million out of 100 billion is a very, very small percentage. This also means for a bucket list vacation, Antarctica would be hard to beat. For reference, 2023 saw a surge of people who went to Antarctica. The number was 100,000, in fact. But to put this in perspective, Europe saw 700 million visitors in 2023. In other words, Europe had 7,000 times more visitors than Antarctica. Next up, learn to drive a stick shift manual transmission automobile. In this day and age, 2.4% of cars have a stick shift. The vast, vast majority are automatic, of course. This means that you haven't driven a stick shift automobile because you've never been around a stick shift automobile, if the statistics prove out in your situation. And let's be honest, it's getting less and less expensive to build an automatic transmission car, so the number of stick shift automobiles continues to go down. And the question often comes up, why do companies even make manual transmissions anymore? But there are certain cars, like the Alfa Romeo, for example, that make a automatic transmission car that has manual transmission paddles on the steering wheel, much like a race car. For those of you who have driven a stick shift automobile, you'll know what I'm talking about. I've driven stick shifts on and off my entire adult life. When you drive an automatic car, you're steering the car. When you're driving a manual transmission car, you're part of the experience of driving the car. If you want to learn how to drive a stick shift, it'll take a day or so, and a brave friend who has a manual transmission automobile, you'll want to be or drive to a place that doesn't have a lot of other cars on the road, and you'll experience a few stalls when you first start out. When your car lunges and the engine dies, it will feel like you'll never be able to drive a stick shift. But everybody that I've met that wanted to learn how to drive a stick shift does in fact drive a stick shift. It just takes commitment on your part and a little bit of bravery on somebody else's part. Next, take a helicopter ride. Less than 1% of the flying population has ever flown in a helicopter, yet we see them flying overhead all the time. This compares to 82% of the population that has been on a commercial airplane. What's surprising though, is for a bucket list activity, it's remarkably inexpensive. For example, if you were here in New York, if you went to New York City, you could fly on a tour of Manhattan and actually the greater New York area for about $150. So if it's something you want to do, it's well within your reach. Next, drive a race car and do it like a professional race car driver. If you've ever wanted to drive a race car, there are ways that we ordinary citizens can do such a thing. Probably the safest way is at a racing school like, say, Skip Barber. These type of racing schools have all sorts of cars available, from the seven-paddle Supra GT4 to a Formula One race car at Skip Barber. The one that most people learn on is the Mustang GT with the internal roll cage, by the way, if this is of interest to you. You don't need to be an experienced driver when you come to a place like Skip Barber, by the way. In fact, they have courses for teens to help them learn how to drive more defensively. Skip Barber is one example. It's something that I've considered for a long time. I've never done it, but there are many racing schools out there. Next, sleep under the stars away from light pollution. If you want to sleep under the stars in a park that has the lowest light pollution in the lower 48 states, you want to go to Big Bend National Park in Texas. The nearest city, which is El Paso, is 300 miles away, and the population of that city, by the way, is about 680,000. It doesn't even make the top 20 in the country. During the day, there's a lot to do out in the middle of nowhere, from whitewater rafting on the Rio Grande, to hiking, to watching roadrunners zip past you out near the cactus. But at night, the show begins. That far away from civilization, you can see things in the sky that you couldn't see anywhere else except for perhaps Maui, Hawaii, or up in Alaska. Aside from just looking up in the sky, there are ranger-guided stargazing programs and moonlight hikes. Next, dine at a Michelin three-star restaurant. A Michelin star is awarded to restaurants with exceptional 
cuisine. And a three-star restaurant is rare. In fact, there are only 13 of them in the United States. And of course, if you don't want to go to or can't afford to go to a three-star restaurant, Michelin has less than 200 star-rated restaurants in the U.S. in its entirety. If this is something you're interested in, you probably can't get a reservation on Open Table, so you'll need to plan early, but it promises to be an amazing experience. Next, renew your wedding vows. Raise your hand if you know someone who has renewed their wedding vows. The chances are, if we were in a room with 100 people, you might see one or two hands go up. Let's start off with the obvious. There are a lot of reasons not to renew your wedding vows. It's not legally binding, it's expensive, society is mixed on it, but if any of those are your reasons not to renew wedding vows, it probably wouldn't make your bucket list. But bucket list activities are not practical for the most part, but they do touch the soul, and that's the purpose of a bucket list activity in most cases. Renewing your wedding vows is one of those experiences. Practical, no. Experiential, absolutely. There's no right or wrong way to do this, by the way. Some cost a few hundred dollars. Some are as grand or even more grand than the first wedding. It's your experience, so you decide. Next, attend a film premiere. If you've ever wanted to attend a world premiere film, there are ways to do it, but it will cost a bit of money. Let me explain. First, you can't just rock up and put down your credit card at the window and get two tickets to a premiere. You need to be invited. Next, the premiere almost always happens in a place like New York City or Los Angeles, not in other parts of the country, so you need to actually get to that place to view the premiere. But assuming that you can get there, getting the ticket is a bit tricky. Oftentimes, radio shows will give away tickets if you're the 10th caller or the 100th caller, whatever the case may be. But a better way or a more surefire way is through an auction. These are often online at sites like Charity Buzz, not sponsored by the way, and the money that you pay goes to a charity in most cases. And if you're looking for a world premiere, it's going to cost quite a bit of money, but it will have the star power more than likely that you're looking for. However, if you're looking at a country premiere, you may still be able to see the same stars, but you won't have the same limitations in terms of access. If you live in New York, for example, try going up to Toronto at a premiere in Canada. The stars generally attend these as well. In fact, I ran into Mark Wahlberg on a flight home from Australia. He was attending the Transformers premiere in Sydney. If you go to a country premiere instead of a world premiere, you may be able to get access to the tickets through a specialty broker. So back to what's inside this glass jar and inside this black bag. Inside the bag are ashes to a firewalk that I participated in in July of 2017. I walked across eight feet of 2000 degree Fahrenheit hot coals on a hot July evening. For me, this was one of the most powerful experiences of my life because if I could do that, I could do just about anything. Did your bucket list item not make my list? If so, let us know what it is in the comments section below. If you like this video, check out that video, 10 cheap purchases that make retirement so much better. This is Jeff Schmidt. Thanks for watching.